Hello and welcome to our discussion on the cash flow statement. In this session, we will pick up a set of transactions. First, convert those transactions into financial statements. Then we'll try to understand the cash flow statement as per the accounting standard 3. When understanding and doing those exercise, we'll try to answer this question, why is CFO not same as profit after tax? To do so, we'll take an exercise which gives a set of transactions. We'll first convert these transactions into financial statement. So started business with cash on 1st April. We assume the accounting year to be a period of one year. So the started business with cash. So it's a receipt 300,000, but this is not an income, but a source and that's called capital. So 300,000 is a capital. Loan raised is also a receipt. So 100,000 and it is an not an income but a liability so it clearly shows that every receipt is not an income a receipt can be an equity or a receipt can be a liability or a receipt can be income purchase stock for rupees 120000 so payment of 120000 has resulted in creation of an asset and the asset is stock Purchase plant for cash, purchase plant for cash, 100,000. Once again, both these payments are not the expenses, but have resulted in creation of asset. One is a stock is a revenue asset and plant is the capital asset. So every payment is not an expense. Payment may result in expense or acquisition of uh, assets sold 60% of the stock on credit the stock that we have is 120,000 60% of that is sold for 250,000 is it for cash no it's not for cash so no cash inflow and receipt and income which is not received is an asset an asset here is called the debtor or receivable the debtor is 250,000. But whenever there is a sale, there has to be cost of goods sold. And the cost of goods sold is 60% of the stock. 60% of the stock sold. So COGS, and as a result, the stock will reduce in the balance sheet from 120,000 to 48,000. So when we purchased the stock, it was 120. And of these 72,000 has become the expense and the balance has remained as a stock. So that's why we say expense, the benefit of which has expired. And asset is something, the benefit of which has not expired or unexpired benefit is asset. Salaries paid is an expense, is an outflow of money, is a payment that is 36,000. And this payment is not an asset creation, but is an expense. So sometimes payments result in acquisition of asset. Sometimes the payments will result in meeting the expenses like rent and salary. So in this case, the rent and salary are the payments are expenses. So some payments have resulted in the acquisition of asset. Some payments have resulted in the expenses so in this case expenses are salaries and rent depreciation for the period is an expense but no cash flow no cash flow but this expense resulted in the reduction in reduction in the asset value so we'll put that in the balance sheet as less accumulated depreciation less accumulated depreciation minus 20,000. So these expenses resulted in outflow of cash and this expense resulted in reduction in the value of the plant. So all other items taken care but though interest is not directly mentioned because of the accrual concept we have to show the interest and let us assume that interest is also been paid so interest is an outflow 
and an expense. So let us find the total expenses for the period. So 198,000. So we get profit before tax and profit before tax is 250,000 minus 198,000. So 52,000 is a profit and tax assuming that the accounting profit is same as the tax profit we calculate the tax to be 15,600 and let us make an assumption that the tax has been fully paid. So the cash uh, profit after tax which is PBT minus the tax 36,400 since no information is given will assume that the entire profit has been retained. So retained profit is transferred from the income statement to the balance sheet. We'll find the cash in hand. Cash in hand is a cash available minus the cash payments and the cash payment during the period is 341,600. So cash in hand is an asset in this case cash in hand is equal to 58,400. So two important items of the balance sheet that is the cash in hand and the profits are coming from the income statement and cash flow statement. In the process I would like to reiterate that the balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement are interdependent. Since we have converted all the transactions into financial statements, now let us focus attention on the cash flow statement. Here we see the receipts and payments. But we would like to understand the cash flow statement using the AS3. And AS3 says, instead of showing receipts and payment directly, it is necessary to classify the receipts and payment into CFF cash from financing, CFI, cash from investment and CFO, cash from operations. So cash from financing here is a capital raised plus loans minus the interest paid. So is a CFF. The CFF is a capital plus loan minus interest paid. CFI is a receipts from investment decision which then in this case no receipt so I put it zero minus the purchase of capital assets or investment which is only hundred thousand in this case. Cash from operation is the receipts from the operations which we don't have anything here because entire sales is on credit but how however there are large payments on for the operating activities in the form of purchase of stock, in the form of per payment toward the salaries, payment towards rent and payment towards the tax. So cash from operation is negative 231,600. The summation of CFF, CFI and CFO is a cash in hand which we got here. So therefore cash in hand at any point of time is the summation of CFF, CFI, CFO and the opening cash in hand. So would like to now answer the last question of, for this particular session that when we are having CFO of 231,600 and but the PAT is 36,000 why is CFO negative when PAT is positive? PAT is not equal to CFO because of non-cash items because of non-cash items, because of non-operating items, items, and because of the credit items, that is credit sales, credit expenses, credit purchases. So CFO is not same as PAT because of the non-cash, non-operating, and uh, the credit items. So let us see what are these non-cash non-operating and credit items. So the profit after tax we already calculated. So interest is a non-operating item. We have deducted while computing the PAT so we'll add it back. Depreciation is a non-cash item. We have deducted while computing the PAT we'll add them back. 
there were some credit sales which can be seen by seeing the balance sheet so there is a huge amount of debtor sitting on the balance sheet so the entire debtor is because of the credit sale entire stock is a purchased stock but we have not used during the period so increase in the stock is considered to be a payment but we have not received or we have not sold goods to that extent so 231 is a CFO which we got here so PAT is not same as CFO because of non-cash items depreciation because of non-operating item interest and because of the credit items that is the stock and or working capital items we call that you know, credit items or working capital items so therefore the CFO is different from PAT because of non-cash because of non-operating and because of working capital so at any point of time it is possible to convert given a set of business decisions into financial statement understand the cash flow the nature of the cash flows and the reason for the difference between the CFF uh, CFO and the profit thank you very much